Alright folks, let's get into it. So assuming that you do have Blender installed already, and you are now interested in rendering a quantum circuit layout in Blender, then the next thing we need to do is actually download KLayout, if you haven't downloaded it already. And then the download page here, if we click on that, we should see the download page of KLayout. And here's the URL page to the page. Here are the supported versions. And if you have a Windows machine like I have, you can click on Windows and then download one of the executables here. Then there are previous versions also available for download. And this should be open source. Okay, so after you download KLayout, the next thing we need to do is open KLayout Editor. So I have it on my start page already, but just for demonstration purposes, let's go to KLayout and then KLayout Editor. Click on this, and a blank page should show up. This is what you should see. And what we need to do is go to Tools, the Tools tab here on the upper left, and go to Manage Packages. If we click on Manage Packages, you should see a list of packages that are installable. And among these, you should find one that says KQ Circuits. Here's a famous one called GDS Factory. Like if I was interested in installing this one, I can double click on it and then click on Apply, and I will install the package. So I have KQ Circuits installed already. So you can see it here under my Current Packages tab. And if I wanted to uninstall it, there's a Remove Package button here. And then here are a couple of other ones that I installed previously. OK, so now if you have installed it, so like I said, you click on, double click on one of these, and then Apply, and have KQ Circuits installed, you should now see it under Current Packages. And now we can close that once it's installed. The next thing we need to do before being able to see the library here on the left side, like what I'm showing, is if you don't see it, then you might have to close KLayout and then restart KLayout. Once you restart KLayout, you should be able to see this list here of the chip library for superconducting quantum circuits, the quantum circuit library. And then the element library, junction library, markers, qubits, and so forth. So there, there are tons of options here that we can play around with. And in our case, for today's demo, we're going to go ahead and just use the chip library and then go to one of the demo chips. So there should be a demo chip here. We can click this and drag it over to the right. And then you won't see anything, so you have to zoom out. And then you should see a, a box, an empty box with some label on it. If we click on this once, then we, we now have this box that's following the cursor. You can drop the box anywhere else. You want to add more, more uh, quantum chips in this layout area. But today we're just going to use one, so I'm going to press Escape to go back to the normal cursor selection. Okay, now in order to see the elements of the box, which is the quantum circuit itself, we need to go up here to the display tab, click on this, and then go to full hierarchy. We can click the asterisk key if you'd like, or just click on full hierarchy, and you should be able to see the quantum circuit layout of this demo chip. But we can also change the name of this circuit by double-clicking anywhere in this box, and then this window pops up. It says Instance Properties. You have P-Cell Parameters tab and then the Geometry tab available here. So you can play around with these parameters. And then the naming is available here. So I can place, I, I can give it my own initials. And then I can give the name of the chip here, like crisp, Crispy crispy chips. <laughs> I can 
leave some of them blank if I'd like, or I can call it Q chip for quantum chip custom name, and then a bunch of other customizable, customizable parameters. So I can press OK, and that will apply to the the quantum circuit that was previously generated. So here we go. We have the resonators. We have about four qubits. One, two, three, four, coupled together through the resonator line. And then you have the junction elements themselves. The capacitive elements. You've got the bond pads, the wire bond pads that lead to this coplanar waveguide. Yeah. So in order to render this in Blender, we can use this drawn out elements, these these blue lines or bluish purple lines as a as a whole. We can use this as a cutout element. So in order to do that, what we need to do is create a box that covers this entire chip. But in order to do that, we should actually identify which parts of the chip that we actually want to keep in the cutout. So, like for example, there are these bridges, these air bridges or dolden bridges that I don't want to render. I'm not interested in that today. So, if we go to this right side and just open every one of these boxes here, and if any one of them is not actually rendered on the chip, we can clean this up by right-clicking anywhere in this region. And then we say clean up layer entries. So if we click on this, it will get rid of all of the layers that are not being used on this quantum circuit layout. Mm -hmm. And we can easily find a section that says air bridge pads. Like I said, I'm not interested in rendering that in Blender for this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that by double clicking on these layers. And then this one. Okay, so that looks better. It's going to be a little easier to 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 place into Blender. And now the next thing that we need to do is hide a couple of more elements. And then, let's see here. We need to merge some things. So in order to make space for this for this junction that's placed here, I'm going to go ahead and merge these two layers together. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this, the qubit itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and merge, see these two layers, so that way this cutout doesn't get in the way of the junction that I'm going to place there. So we can do this by a Boolean operation. So the Boolean operation, as you might imply, allows us to either subtract or add together or merge together layers or layer elements. So there's a section called layer here under the edit. So to go to the edit tab, layer, and then Boolean operations. If we click on this, we have the option to create a Boolean of whatever layer that we want. In this case, layer 130 and 131. I want to merge these two together, so I'm going to use the union mode, and then I'm going to merge it into just one layer. Actually, I'm going to merge them both into layer 130. And we can leave the default options for the hierarchy and just press OK. So now I can hide this and we can see that they have been merged together into this single layer. And now when the cutout happens, we have room to actually place the junction element that will be that will be used <laughs> for our blender render. You can choose to keep the junction separate if you want to have two separate junction like a separation between the junctions as one element and then the what would be like a mask layout. So 
or you can merge them and into a single layer. So for today's purpose, we'll just go ahead and merge the junction together with the with the not the cutout, but the result of the cutout. So next thing we need to do is actually create a new layer. So go to edit layer new layer and it would just call it something like layer two and we'll call this mask press ok so we now have created this new layer and what we want to do is click on this mask layer and then go to this box click on box and then we're going to add a box that's going to overlay this by clicking once and then we click it a second time we can now create this box that covers this general quantum circuit area there we go boom and now the cutout happens we want to cut layer 130 with this mask layer it's going to cut a giant hole into that. So let's do the op the Boolean operation. So go to Edit, Layer, Boolean operation. Now we can select layer 130 and then scroll around and look for the mask layer. It should say mask on it. And I think I passed it. There we go, mask. And I'm interested in creating a difference. So I'm going to keep source B and then get rid of source A, the shape of source A. And then I want to merge this or, or have the output into, let's see here, we'll just make it the mask layer, how about that? This will be the output. Mask 2 is now the output, and if I press OK, We'll cut a giant hole, and if I hide this previous cutout, we now have an actual cutout. Look at this. This is something that we can actually in extrude in Blender. That's good. And one last thing is to make things easier to speed up and to save time on, on our tutorial for today is we're going to combine the junction that we that we have hidden so the junction is here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and combine the junk, the layer of the junction element with the mask layer. So I'm going to combine these two. Let's do another Boolean operation. So Boolean operation, layer, Boolean operation. I'm going to say layer 136. And then look for the mask layer that we did create. There we go. And I want to combine this into just the mask layer itself. And then press Union to merge them together, and then press OK. And now we can hide the previous junction element, the individual junction element. And now we have this single layer with all of the elements laid out that we can extrude in Blender and then render it. It's going to be very thin. Okay, so this looks good. This is, this is ready for importing into Blender. If you don't want this outer edge here, you can also remove it. You can simply press select, double click on this outer edge, or even select, well, if you had different layers in there, you could get rid of one region one by one. Like I could get rid of the outer layer if I wanted. But I'll just leave it on there. So we're going to go ahead and press save, save as, and then save this as a DXF because Blender allows you to import DXF files. So I'm going to save this in my downloads folder. We're just going to call this demo quantum ship. Press save and we only want to render the visible layers, so I'm going to go ahead and press OK and leave the default options. Now, 
I'm going to close this. And now we can go to Blender. The next thing we need to do in Blender is go to the Edit tab and select Preferences. We need to make sure that the DXF Import option is selected. So if that's not, go ahead and select that. And then press Refresh. So I have this selected. That's good to go. The other option that we may have to consider is one of the mesh tools. So I'm going to click on mesh and there's a, there's a section here that says edit mesh tools. Go ahead and select that. That's another tool we're going to use after we turn the, the layout into a mesh. Because that's ultimately how we turn it into a 3D object in Blender. Okay, now next thing we need to do is come here I have my computer hooked up to, let's see here, I have it hooked up to a RTX 4070 Ti Super. I'm using the optics vendor. And I have like 128 undo steps just in case. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to use cycles to use the GPU and also for some ray tracing features and then I'm going to use make sure the GPU option is loaded and this is kind of extreme here so we can reduce this to like maybe 50 samples and then you can choose to do denoising but I'm not interested in denoising today and then for the noise threshold we just keep it as one and let's see here, we're going to do motion blur, and then I'm going to do, let's see here, light path. Okay, so light path, and then fast GI approximation. This will allow us to reduce the render time. Okay, looks good to me. Volumes, and then... Film. Okay, let, let me just double check a couple of settings here. Caustics. If you're interested in caustics, you can do that. But we're not necessarily interested in that today either. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a blend file. Say quantum chip demo. Layout. Alright, go ahead and save. Now, next thing we need to do is click on the camera and then scroll in and then use the control key together with the the pressing of the scroll button on the mouse so that we can carefully select this box and then press in on the keyboard. If we press the letter in, we should see an option that says view and then click on camera to view. This will allow us to lock the camera view. So we can press in again to close that and now we have the ability to move this camera around. Next thing we need to do is click on camera and then we have a camera data properties. And then we are also interested in Introducing a depth of field. And let's see here. The clip start, let's go ahead and add a couple of zeros to this so that we, we can see as far as we need to. Then the other option is to click on the object properties which in which the rotation can be fixed. We'll make that zero, we'll make that zero, and we'll make that zero. And if we zoom out, we, we should now be aligned very nicely with this region. Okay, that's good. Now, under Render Properties, no, Output Properties, I want to change this to something else. See, I have some, I have some personal notes here. 
on, on tools that I use a lot in Blender. So there's an aspect ratio that I really like. 2160 by 40, 1440. This is good for a 3 by 2 aspect ratio at 2K resolution. So I'm going to type in 2160 by 1440. And then render region and crop to region. We can leave it at 24 frames a second. That's good enough. Okay, that's good. Now, the next thing we can do is select on the output. There's an output here, and I'm going to select the Downloads tab because I want to place the render here and then press OK. It's just going to give a directory to the Downloads file, the Downloads folder, and then it will save it here once it's rendered. And I also want to render an animation, so I'm going to click on File Format for video and then do MPEG 4 for the encoding. Then we're going to do Perceptually Lossless because I previously had issues with some weird blotches coming up in, in rendering parts of this quantum chip mask. Okay, that looks good. All right, let's go ahead and import the DXF of the quantum chip layout. So click on DXF import and then look for demo quantum chip. And let's go ahead and reduce the size or the, the scaling to three zeros so point three zeros and then five if we do that it will, it will reduce the size of the mask and we should be able to see it here that's good we can also change the camera view so that we're not moving using too much too much of the camera or we can hide the camera a little bit and there you go we have the the mask here and there are all these extra lines on there that I don't want to show. We're going to go ahead and... After, let me see here. We're going to click on one of these edges here of, of this, this mask layer. And then we need to set the origin. So go to Object tab. In Object Mode, that is. Object Mode, Objects, Tab. And then go to set origin and then press center of mass to the surface there we go just makes it easier to locate this 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 arrow here we can use this to click and drag the design of this mask elsewhere because i'm going to go ahead and click and drag this area to select all these lines I don't want these lines. So I'm going to press delete. And now the lines are gone. No more lines. We don't need them. And I'm going to drag this mask back over here to the center. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is perhaps rotate this, right? So we would go ahead and use the rotation tool and then do negative 90 and there we go 90 degree rotation of this mask now go ahead and select that again select the move and just just for good practice the next thing we need to do is go to the object tab again and while it's still selected go ahead and say convert into a mesh so now this has become a mesh officially Okay, so let's go to edit mode. Once you are in edit mode and you have edge selection and you are using wireframe shading, go ahead and select the entire mask design. Then what we can do is press the letter F and that will fill in all these regions that are supposed to be filled in whereas the cutouts remain as cutouts 
Look at that. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is zoom in a little closer. And while that's still selected, select the face. Then press the letter E on the keyboard to extrude the geometry in the vertical direction. And if you're not sure if it's starting to move around, you can press the letter Z. So if it's moving around like this, you can press the letter Z to lock it in the Z direction. And then you can use this to extrude the chip geometry. And now we can go back to object mode and return to one of the other shading methods. And now we can see that the quantum chip pattern has been turned into a 3D geometry with all the cutouts. You can see the waveguides. Everything is to scale. <laughs> and since we did put the Joseph's injunctions along together with the the rest of the mask layer, <laughs> it also did get extruded. So the The, junction them, the junctions themselves, you can see them here, and they have been extruded as well, right there. <laughs> okay, just wanted to show that. So, there's those ones, and then, oops, I'll go back. Some more of the Joseph's injunctions here, next to this coupling capacitor. Yep. And zoom in very carefully. You can kind of see that it's been f fully extruded with everything. But for for visualization's sake, it's, this is pretty good. Okay. So now we can go ahead and begin to introduce other geometries, and then we will make this look like a gold surface. So if we go to this viewport shading, we can see that there is no light. I accidentally deleted the light, so I'm going to go ahead and add a light. Light, three point lights. That looks good to me. Object set origin, volume. There we go. So we got three lights. We can move this around anywhere that we wish. And if you don't have this three-point light option available, then one way to double check is to go to the edit men the yeah edit tab or edit menu preferences add-ons and then type in lights or light and then you need to have this lighting try lighting checked off. So you can go ahead and save that. And an exit out of that little menu. All right, so right now the lights are not quite shining. We can click on this light bulb here, the icon, and then go to perhaps a sun, then another sun, and another sun. We go back to the camera view, which is this camera button here, and we can see. A nice view of this surface. But let's go ahead and go to this material properties, click on this here, and then click on new. If we select a yellow color that looks somewhat like gold, then it's a good starting point. And then we just crank up this metallic finish, and then the roughness we can decrease that to make it look more like. More like gold. Let me just make this some higher value. Yeah. So there you go. Quantum circuit. I mean, you could stop here if you want to just visualize only the mask, but
but there are more ways of showing this particular design. What we can do is add a cube. So add mesh cube. And remember, this is an object mode. So add mesh cube. And then we can expand this by pressing the letter S on the on the keyboard. If we press that, we can begin to scale this geometry. And now we can, while it's still selected, we can go to edit mode, select use a face selection, and then select the top face, and then shrink it down. But just simply sliding it down, get really close to this 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 waveguide structure. Bring it really close. Okay. It's good. Then select the bottom face, push this up. Just enough so that it kind of looks like a chip. All right, that's good. Now we can go back to object mode and we can add a texture to this. We can do something like refraction BSDF, give it kind of a blue color, decrease the roughness. Move the light that way a little bit. There you go. I'm going to play around with the lighting settings here. I mean, you can do some things like see here. And I can change the cost. Yeah. 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 Then and make this like and select materials here. Select new, and then start finish, increase the Yeah, and this other way, definitely increase the level But increase the intensity as well. Okay. Bring the some more. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. 